passion is obviously I'm, I am a child psychiatrist. Um, I've, I, uh, am a, uh, assistant clinical professor at NYU, um, where I finished my child and adolescent, uh, fellowship. Um, uh, and I started practicing and, um, I started also at St. Vincent's. That's where I did my adult training in psychiatry. And there, um, it was just at the end of the HIV AIDS epidemic. And, um, um, St. Vincent's was the hub for all of these, um, gay men who had, you know, contracted the disease. And I worked on that floor for a long time and, and came very close into contact with these people going through so much, um, and su- str- struggling so much and suffering so much. And, um, working with that community, I developed a real appreciation and love for their, their plight. And then, you know, through the course of my early career, um, gay, gay marriage became more, started to become more acceptable. But, but when I was growing up, it was just not, it was not a thing. It was, nobody talked about it. Um, gay parents were, it was frowned upon for them to have children and, you know, um, there was a huge amount of stigma. It's changing so much now, which is wonderful, um, that I developed a little bit of a bee in my own personal bonnet about how do I, um, how do I help, um, be a part of the healing process of our culture, um, realizing that parents, no matter where they come from, if they want to be parents are going to be great parents. Um, and then I started reading the studies about the single sex women, uh, the Goldberg studies. I don't know if you heard about her, um, but she did all these studies normalizing um, same sex women parents. And she found that um, not only were they good parents, but they're actually great parents, sometimes even better parents than heteronormative parents, because um, you don't get pregnant by accident. Right. That was really the, the difference. Um, there's no oops babies when you're, when you're single sex. Um, you, it's a very intentional thing. It costs money. There's no way to do it quickly. And so these people want it more than anything in the world. So because of the intentionality, they make very good parents. Um, and in all cognitive tests and all psychological adjustments and their kids are no more likely or less likely to choose a same sex relationship when they get older. Um, you know, this kind of idea that they would, people had back then, like you were going to make people gay, which is totally false. We know, but you know, this was, this was what, you know, I kind of grew up with. Um, and now, you know, I think most of those myths are debunked and all of that, but now we have the new gay community is the polyamorous community. Now they're facing all the same challenges that the gay community faced as the norms are shifting. Um, and my opinion is like, all it takes to be a great parent is to be a great parent. It really has nothing to do with your sexual story, but you can pass down intergenerational sexual trauma for sure. Um, and, and that is something that my book really, I try to address in the book, which is that, um, it doesn't matter what kind of sex you have or what your preferences are. Um, you have to pass down intergenerational sexual wisdom, you know, and you have to be able to frame it in a way and pass down that wisdom to your child. Um, and you can say too much. You can disclose too much. You can mess up your kids if you bring them into your sex life in an inappropriate way, but it doesn't matter. You know, that that can happen to anyone regardless of your background. 